Well, we've been at this job before. We've uh, scarified it and we weeded it. So now we're here to do the hedges. I'm just going to get these hedges in shape. I'm going to cut them. I'm also going to cut the holly. Get the holly cut and we're going to neaten that. Give it a straighten. And also the hedges that are over there and the laurel at the back. So this is going to need leveling. Um, it isn't very level at the moment. So we'll get on with that. It's a pity next door's is sticking out as well because it does take your eye off how straight this hedge gets cut. It doesn't look straight at all as you'll see at the end. Um, immediately next door to this hedge is next door's that's just sticking out. I hope that this would encourage them to uh, get a price off us to cut it but um, they're getting building work done so they're not really interested in the front at the moment, maybe when that's done. And I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, I say it on every job, I can't believe what comes off. I mean especially this because it doesn't look like much is coming off or much will come off but you know as you can see on the floor plenty does come off Okay, that's all the front cut, and obviously it's got to thicken up. It's a, a little bit see-through at the moment, but there's nothing I can do. I can't glue leaves on. So it will come up. As I say, we, we do feed our gardens as well when we're maintaining them. So each time I come, well not each time I come, but you know, quite regularly, I'll put a bit of food down. So what I've got to do now is I'm going to cut it straight. And I, I did mention this a couple of times. It um, goes along, it's quite neat, but it goes up there drops down there and then here's a bit low as well and then this one it's not what it's all about that one uh, what I'm going to do is when I keep saying leveling it I won't get it straight because the road runs down on a hill so what I'm going to do is get it an even um, an even shape say whatever that is distance from the floor but a little tip for you is if you're going to do a hedge always start from the lowest bit unless there's a reason why you can't but if you start from the lowest obviously it's common sense you, you're cutting into the hedge if you started up there went down a couple of inches you come along and suddenly it's you don't know where you are here so if the hedge does run up and down a bit undulating try and pick the lowest bit if it's possible and if that's if that's if that's okay to do that's what i'm going to do anyway um so i'll start that Well, I didn't realise you can actually see the laurel at the back and how much of a angle it's at. At the very back, it goes slopes up to the right, but I didn't realise it went up so much. And also this little holly, just, you know, quite a bit to come off to level it. All the more thought. quite hard to cut as well Holly you've got to make sure I mean I was gonna say make sure the shears are sharp but you should always make sure they're sharp but especially with this because it's not soft growth they're like Holly knits itself together it's like pyracantha Um it's little tough branches they are it goes through it but you can just it's tough I haven't got my shears pushed right into the hedge here because I'm just doing 
a little mark just so I can step back and have a look at the mark and once I'm happy I'll push the shears right in. So glad I'm cutting this inside one straight as well, not just because I want the head straight, but also I was um, catching my fingers on the holly every time I mowed, so I was really looking forward to cutting this back. get more of an idea there of how undulating the top is. And then obviously where the thicker bits get the loppers out or the secateurs either or. But, you know, to try and save the machine. They will go through all sorts, these machines. They are tough as old boots. But you will ruin them, damage them, knack them out if you start going through things too thick when you don't have to. Well, I just need a little um, tidy up because I've pulled the loose branches off it and flicked off a few little branches and twigs. So I'll go over that before we're done. I'll start on this one then. We'll get this one done. I'm going to sort of contradict myself here a little bit. It's I'm doing the opposite to what I said a minute ago. I said when there's a dip, start at the lowest and go along and you can straighten it up. Um, the reason why I've done this is because there's only one small dip in it and I'd rather get the head straight and then let that dip grow up and grow out and then it'll all be level rather than taking the head. The head will be taken down too low then. Not only does she want it not taken down, but it's also too much work for me to do for what I've priced. So the obvious thing is straighten, you know, 90, 95% of the hedge to one height and let that small dip grow and um, re-level itself. So obviously that is a bit of a contradiction, but obviously you work it out what, what needs what whenever you're doing a hedge.
Okay, well let's cut, leveled, shaped, and so is that. And I, <laughs> you'll have to take me word for it, it is straight. But if you look in that corner, it's next doors. All that's sticking up is next doors, hedge. So I've cut what I can to neaten it, but there's just bits that look like it's sticking up. It's not that hedge. There's a dip there that I'm keeping. I'm going to let it grow up. And the corner looks a bit... Um, like a dog's been biting it. All that hanging over is next doors. I can't really cut it. I've cut enough off of here. In fact, I think I might just cut it before I go. I don't know because it just doesn't make this hedge look good. But I don't know. It might just encourage the neighbour to cut theirs. You never know. Okay, we're on to this bit now. And nothing straightforward. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but if you don't know what it's supposed to be, then it's up to me to decide what it's going to be, if that makes sense. For instance, this little bit here is lower than that bit. But I don't know whether it's just that bit that's fell forward, started to grow, been left. I'll play it by here. At the end of the day, it's going to be neat, no matter what. But I'll, I'll decide on sort of what height I'm going to play it by here. So I'm just going to cut it back for now, up front and back, and then we'll have a look at the height and see what shape we've got. It's probably just going to be two rectangles and that's a privet in there. So I'm going to round that and you'll see as it goes. Okay, let's get on with that. And that's another thing that's always amazing now, like openings in hedges always start to grow and you don't see them getting smaller and smaller until you're trying to squeeze through a smaller gap. And then once you open it up again, you realise how small it became. It is weird. You don't seem to see things growing. Putting this back was just like opening Pandora's box. It just showed a real mix of all sorts of rubbish that you know I didn't even know was in there. Because even though it needed cutting, it was at least green. As you can see, I brought the other set of ladders with me. Uh, I just couldn't remember how big the hedges were and I thought, well, I, the last thing I want to do is go and not have them. So even though I've took them and I don't need them, I, I'm glad they're there, just in case, you never know. In fact, um, no, sorry, I was going to say I needed them for their back, but I didn't really. I did put the camera on them, but, you know, I'm not needed just to put a camera on.
and it all depends on how much time you use using the loppers um, on like when people ask pricing and things like that if this bush just needed the hedge cutters on it it would take half the time as when you're using the secateurs or the lot or the loppers because it just takes more time and effort and you don't really know until you're doing the job so you can look at something and think oh that will only take me 20 minutes and then once you start to get everything else out it's longer Well, a little bit more to clear up there, <clears throat> a little bit more to clear up here. And it's just, if there's one thing that makes me feel sick, well, two things. One, lots of beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, two things that make me feel sick. Um, skeletal shrubs, I don't like it, but you've got to do it. It's got to be cut back to A shape or A size. <clears throat> that will be, it'll all be sound. It'll all be sound. I've rounded ish that one, rounded. This one, it's got all sorts in it, um, even bindweed. I, I will get that out as I go. Um, but that's shooting up and there's an ash coming through there. There's all sorts in it. I didn't even know half of these things were in it. But it's fuchsia, um, um, privet, uh, lilac, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, so honeysuckle, okay. What on this mess here now? With this crocosmere here, I don't mind crocosmere if it's kept in order. So I'm just going to get all this out and blow it and we'll just see if it looks any better. But it still will look skeletal till later on in the season. And again over there we'll get the blower on it. So I'll just show you what we're up to there, the mess. And just to see if it looks any better when I'm done. Okay, I'll get on with that. And as with all of my videos, I will do a follow-up video and an update. And I will put it in the description. So if you look in the description, obviously I haven't done a follow-up now because I've only just put this out, so it will be put on. So if you are looking at this video at a later date, just check the um, the description and it'll be in there. But I like to do follow-ups and I like people to look back and see what it was like.
and it's so strange as well even for me who cut the hedge when I'm editing it now like this and I'm putting it together I think was it really that much coming off and was it really that sort of thick in places or was the top really that uneven and you just it's unbelievable I mean that looks a hell of a lot to come off there and I didn't realise there was that much So as you can see there, I've got another little dip, but it's, it's quite a long sweeping dip, isn't it? So I've decided to start there to get me, me straight edge all the way along, which does mean digging into the hedge all the way around, giving myself more work, but it will be a better job. Because no matter where else I started and I went straight, I can't explain it. You'd end up being straight but like say where my hedge cutters are now would be straight and then it'd stop there and the dip would still be there but a big sweeping dip so you wouldn't get the dip out so yeah i'm gonna start at the lowest point again but it does mean especially over on the far right hand side as you're looking at it now on the far corner it doesn't half go up higher And while I've got your attention, can I please remind you all of the videos that I've already done? Um, I do get some absolutely fabulous comments. I'm really, really thankful and pleased with them. You know, things like, um, I love your videos, I can't wait for your next one, or when are you putting your next one out, or things on that, on that level. And I just feel so proud and I'm just thankful, and I love doing it. But I would like to say there are, well literally hundreds now of older videos that I haven't got much um, viewing figures on and I'm wondering why because the reason I'm saying it I've, I've put as much effort and passion and love and attention into those videos that I do now and I just like someone who appreciates these videos to still watch those and appreciate those videos so instead of just waiting for a new one just if you find yourself with, you know, five, ten minutes to spare, have a look at some of my older videos, especially my landscaping ones, because I'm really proud of them. Ones with the Indian stone and the brickwork. I mean, I love it. And I love doing them. So if you could just take a look at them, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. And as I was saying, these are the eight foot ladders. They worked perfect. Um, I think the others were way too high, but I didn't know that when I was uh, at home planning the job. So I was glad I took them, but as I say, these worked fine, just right. Well, we're getting there now. This one's done. The height's done, the front's done, and I'm just on the back one now as you can see but I will show you the difference in thicknesses of hedge and this is what you've got to be careful of because I am not happy watch this okay so we're on the top and this is the width of that one 
which is probably about, I work in feet, so it's probably about four feet. So a metre and a half, something like that. And then we've got this one. Which is probably about four metres. 15 feet, something like that, I don't know. But that's where I can reach to with me long reach. I've got my long reach still there. I've got the pole extension, which I will get a little bit further, but I won't get to the other side. Whether I can get round or not, I don't know. But just look at that. That is some width. So we'll get on with that. You can actually see here on this clip how wide the hedge is. I mean, on that one I just showed you, that you couldn't really see it. It didn't look that wide. But I think once I get up now and I cut it, and this is with the long reach. So you can see the difference. And then I've took the extra long reach with the pole extension in it and it still didn't reach. And that was heavy. I really paid the price the next day, I was tired. I like to only use this extension on up upright vertical head the front of the hedge. I don't like using it when it's stretched out, it's just too heavy. And I've mulched all the clippings like you saw in the front. 
and I'm just tidying up. And it's the back done, cleaned up, and that's nice and straight. Happy with that? <clears throat> we'll keep that nice and straight now. Yeah, very happy. And um, obviously the hedge is about 15 foot deep, as you know, so I blew the mulch under, you can't even see it under there. And I'm quite happy with that as well. So, I'll show you the front. So that's the hedge all cut as well and levelled and I don't know if you can pick it up on, on the video but the ground slopes here and then just by my front wheel it suddenly goes like that and I've done the same with the hedge because I've got it the same height and it's giving me nightmares really I'm thinking to myself have I still got a bump in it but it, it changes this is like one slope from this grid slopes down so I'm really happy with it but as I say I keep looking at it twice I, <laughs> turn my head and this bit sticking out as I said um, earlier on in the video it's next doors I can't do anything about it I can't cut it I suppose I could I've cut a little bit but so that's just straight we're just waiting for that to grow once that gets in leaf that'll be a nice straight edge and again this corner looks like a dog's chewed it anything sticking up is from next door but it's it's straight and it's it's just a waiting game now just got to clean the front up now that's just mulching the front got to clean all the front up so yeah I'm happy with that you can see the hedge level there and then from from here it's just starts it's just starts to drop down now so that sounds brilliant okay i'll show you when it's all cleaned up the front so i'm very happy with the turn out of the holly hedge that's fine and i've it, i've took it on the inside as well to give me a little bit of space where to take the mower just took it back a little bit there to do the mower and this is looking all right from the last pruning just see a few little bits coming up inside anyway um, this is all cleaned up, but this, I must say, is enough to give me sleepless nights. I hate it. It's it's what I hate about pruning. When, if you prune something like, I mean, I haven't done this Leyland eye, but if you did something like that, and it's nice and straight, and the job's done, and it looks great, and I'm happy with the laurel at the back, it's all nice and boxed off and square, because this is so um, intermingled with all sorts of stuff, and branches sticking out, see if it's cut that branch that's sticking out there, and the whole, like whatever is attached to it will come off. So I'm, I'm just going to play by it. There's ivy in it. All it's done is it's exposed stuff that's inside it. So I'm not happy. It could give me sleepless nights that I really feel a bit sick with it. There's nothing else I can do. I've shaped it and we'll let it thicken up. And it's the holly sticking through it. I mean, pruning it is one thing, but getting in and taking everything else out is another job. So one step at a time, it can certainly be done. And I'd enjoy doing it. But I'd have to get paid to do it. So what I've done is shape that one as you can see, shape that one as you can see, and just shape that one. I'm gonna give it some feed as I keep saying, and we'll just let it come back and see what happens. But any of this green that's exposed at the bottom and ivy, I'll do that on a on a visit, on a um, maintenance visit. So yeah, and there's the hedge and it follows the street. So I'm very pleased with that. And as I say, <laughs> probably won't get to sleep tonight but I'm so pleased with the um, laurel um, and thanks very much and I hope it's been of interest as I keep saying always if you do subscribe thanks very much it's always appreciated and if you don't please subscribe and come and join us free to subscribe just uh, press that bell and then you'll get some notifications um, again just one little scan and then Thank you. See you all soon on the next video.